Hello, Randy Rain here. And once again, it's time for one of my how to make anything remote control. And this time we are looking at the tiny motor control. That's about all I can give you with the name. You can find them on Amazon and you can find them on AliExpress for sure. But they are so much more than just a little motor control. So let me show you. Yeah, so for this one, all you got to do is hook it straight up to a motor and you can make it turn one direction and then you can make it turn the other direction real easy. I've been making these videos for my magician friends because the number one question I get asked is how do I make something remote control? So if you want to put something on there and make it go back and forth, I mean, you're already there. This is at 5 volts right now, but this could go up to 12 volts, but it's only going to be able to hold up to a half of an amp. And that could be a problem if you want to run something that's going to need some power. And that's where our sponsor comes in today because just a few videos ago, we did an H-Bridge video where PCBWay created the PCBs for me to do H-Bridge motor controls. And I made three different ones, or there's a small one, there's a bigger one, and then there's actually a dual as well. But all you have to do is hook this up and you'll be able to use a lot more amps. And these are really easy to make. You can see my other video and there's links below and you can go straight to PCB Way. And they'll go right into your cart and then once you purchase them, they'll be at your door in no time. So go check out PCB Way for their PCBs. They also do 3D printing and CNC and so much more. So go check them out and I thank them for sponsoring this video. These first two here are just the power. This is your negative and this is your positive. And supposedly this thing can do anywhere from 3.3 volts all the way up to 12 volts, which that's pretty impressive actually. The other two here are what goes to the motor. So each side of the motor is the other side. And then up here that has no wires connected to it, that is for the set button. Now you can connect wires to it and put a button on it to make it easier to set. But to set it, you just got to jump that little guy. Then I'm going to push this and now it's set. There's... These come in momentary switches and latching switches. This one is the momentary. You have to hold it down. And when you let up, it turns off. And this one, the stop button really doesn't do anything. So let's say you need to run the motor off of some big battery like this because you need some amps. Well, it's pretty simple here. It's here. You just, you just bring in the power here to the board. This right here is the inputs. And connect them straight to the outputs for the motor on the remote. Okay, I'm going to make sure the grounds are connected. Okay, so now let's look at what we have. The remote circuit is being powered. The output that usually goes to the motor is now going to the H-bridge. And so when one side goes positive, it's going to make it go one way. When the other side goes positive, it's going to make it go the other way. And this can handle a lot of amps. So this little tiny circuit isn't restricted to just have an amp if you get a little H bridge going. It's a pretty sophisticated little circuit too because it's not just holding ground right now. It's hooked up to one side here and you see there's nothing. And if I push one side, you'll see that side is now going to ground. But if I push the other side, it's doing nothing. And if I don't push any button, it's doing nothing. I can do the other side here. Now that top one doesn't do anything. Now the bottom one makes it go to ground. Let's put this on the ground. Let's try positive now. As you can see, there is no positive. When I push the top button, that one goes to positive. I'll push the bottom button. You're getting nothing. Try the other one. Nothing. Top button doesn't do anything. Bottom button makes it go high. So both of these are floating 
when not being pushed and they go positive and negative only when a button is pushed. Okay, now I told you it was versatile. So you could put some LEDs here. Put an LED on that one. And on that one. Turn it on. I have it at 3.3 volts, so I don't need a resistor. But now the top button makes that one come on. And the bottom button makes that one come on. But let's say you have a big six volt battery like this. You can run the positive to it here and the negative. That'll turn it on. So see it flashing. So it comes on from one of these outputs. I can run to a light bulb. And then from the other side of the light bulb. So if I put it on negative, the top button doesn't do anything. But the bottom button does. If it came off the other one, went to another light bulb on the other side, and then brought it to ground as well. Now the bottom button turns that one on, and the top button turns that one on. So it's supposed to handle 12 volts. I've got a nice 12 volt battery pack. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Wow, yeah. One direction and the other direction. I'll put the motor to one of them. And this one go to ground. Then I have a little solenoid here. And the other side of it will go to ground. So now I hook it to here. And I'll plug this big 12 volt battery in. So now the bottom And the top one turns to them. And the bottom one. <laughs> it goes. And the top one. But wait, there's even more. I use these little pickaxe chips all the time. These are my favorite little chips. And if you need to input, all you need is two 1K resistors. And let's say these pins here are inputs. We'll run one to there, and you'd run another one over to there, to the other pin. And then you need two 10K resistors. And these don't have to be exact. You just need this one to protect the chip. And then you need this one as a pull down resistor. So you hook it to the pin as well and then put it onto ground. Okay, check out my setup here. When I plug it in, big 12 volt power pack here will come in here and it's going to go into the motor control from PCB way. And the motor is connected to it, but power is also coming around and going to this little buck converter that drops it down to five volts, which brings it into here. Also gets jumped over to here for this side. I put a cap here on the voltage rail just to keep it smooth. Probably not needed, but you can see the little Remote control circuit is plugged in here, so it's just getting 5 volts, but the pickaxe chip is also just getting 5 volts. And I have the output of the remote into these resistors, 
with the pull down resistors and then I have the output going straight to my motor control. Now I've programmed the pickaxe chip just with a simple code that with each one of these key presses and making one of these pins go high, it's going to turn one of these on, make the motor go one direction for five seconds and then shut off. And then the other side does the other direction for five seconds. So now when I push these buttons, it'll go one way or the other way, but it'll do it for five seconds and I don't have to hold it down. So here's this one. So you can use it basically as a two channel remote as well. And it turns off the other one. The other one. Do it again. So you can see why it's my new favorite little remote circuit. It works perfect for a motor at a range of different voltages. If not, it works perfect with my little H-Bridge circuit from PCBWay. And it works great as a two-channel remote system, and it's so tiny. And if you like this video about this little tiny remote system, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff, hit the subscribe button. I want to thank these people. These are the patrons. These are the people bringing you this little remote circuit that is my new favorite. And if you'd like to become a patron, of course, there are perks and all that. Then check out the links and everything below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Now I want to turn it on the top button. Activates the solenoid. And the bottom button turns on the motor. Solenoid, motor. Solenoid, motor.